people mostly out there on the streets, the desperately poor. And then I look at the news and I see all the bringing in. Yeah, anytime the kid gets in from another country, then automatically the parents got a they got the foot in the door. So it's all a setup. It's all a scam. You got the Catholic charities involved in all these things. All kinds of stuff going on. I don't mind. I mean, I'm all hey, let them all want to come to America. That's fine. I treat them right. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome them. But in an orderly fashion, a first come, first serve, a fair way. You know, play the let's play the game fairly. So if we got all this social welfare money available, why aren't we using it for these people at the bottom of the heap? You understand? It makes me. <laughs> so if you wonder why I'm crazy, I've been paying attention for a long time. When I was in high school, I remember my high school United States history and United States government teacher, two different classes. Bob Listener at Santa Cruz High when I was you know, 16 years old, 15, 16, 17, 18. He, he and my dad knew each other. My dad was pretty aware of what was going on. He was totally opposed to the Vietnam War. He was kind of hanging around the liberal type, social-minded liberals, I guess you would say. And Bob Listener was one of those. He was my teacher, and they knew each other. So Bob, by extension, also felt like he knew me. But it was very interesting. I think he had a lot of fun, you know, talking to me personally because he felt like he was talking to an extension of my dad, which was his friend. But the Bob was a very interesting guy. And, you know, when he talked about politics and money, he said, it's, it's like this. It's one and the same. It's all the same. It's all about money. You get into the political theater, it's all about lots of money, just like in the Hollywood theater. It's all about lots of money. People doing these jobs, yeah, I mean, I could act, sure. Why not? Who can't act for lots of money, right? But, friends, I'm telling you, this country... It looked like there was hope back in the 70s when I was a teenager. It really did. I mean, still, even with JFK being assassinated, it still looked like, I mean, inflation was, I mean, for example, I remember my mom rented a duplex. It was half a block, less than half a block. It was 115 Sacramento Avenue. You could Google that probably, which is right off Westcliff Drive. Westcliff Drive runs perpendicular to Sacramento Avenue. And when I was a teenager, I lived in a little duplex there. It's probably still there today. But the rent was 200 bucks, to give you an idea. True, it was only one bedroom, but I converted the garage to a uh, my bedroom. And um, it was great. I was very happy there. My mom and I live in there. But um, for a while, and then I got emancipated, and I got to rent the place. But in, inflation was at a virtual standstill, and Jimmy Carter was president. He was trying to keep it all, keep it down, you know. And uh, But, you know, all that shot to hell. I mean, the last vestige of hope was that bailout of 08. That's why there was all that immense, intense controversy, the Occupy Wall Street, and all those marches and stand-ins and sit-ins and sleep-ins was all people, and remember it was Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives, remember that? Remember that? The Tea Party, remember that? We opposed the bailout that Mr. Barack Obama was very instrumental at pushing through. You can look this up, I'm not making anything up, so do your own research if you doubt the things I'm saying. But if you have no reason to doubt it, then you got to believe it. But yeah, the Democrats, they act like, oh yeah, we want to tax the rich. It's like saying, yeah, we want to shoot ourselves in the foot. Well, yeah, we're liars. Duh, wake up. Didn't you know that? But shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. We got a huge swath of the population deceived, duped into believing we're champions of the poor. We're the social, economically minded party, and blue collar party, and party of the poor, and all this crap crap is all it is and the, and the pukey republicans i got no respect rich republicans he make me want to vomit and i'm a registered republican but yeah i've got i've got very little regard for any of these people i really do i mean show me the proof is in the pudding how you vote your fruits that bailout that's disgusting that's where we need to unite and realize hey those people are still here in america 
come together on that. They want us divided. They want us to believe in this red-blue crap. Look at this crap, the way they brainwash us, indoctrinate us, and program us with this crap. It sickens me to my core. I can't tell you. Listen, friends, so I'm getting carried away. I'm trying not... Trying to be less emotional. You know, I would dearly love for this scowl to go away from my face, but even when I was very young in my 20s, I remember my wife took a picture of me when I was sleeping, and it was there, so I don't know. Maybe it's like a birthmark or something. I just don't know. But I know I scowl because I get frustrated. I know I scowled a lot when I surfed a lot because, um, and that was mostly when I was a teenager, because of the glare. You know, I'm, it's hard to wear sunglasses when you're surfing, but you sure as hell ought to be. And there's a great idea right there. It's, and even if they already exist, they probably do, sunglasses for surfers. Hey, it's called competition, right? So you come up with a better design. And, uh, you know, maybe I will. I'm trying. I'm trying to get an innovator's investment group together and let's work together. You know, more minds, you know, at least a partner. I need somebody to get started with, man. You can't do everything your own, but I've got so many great ideas, and even if it's stuff that already exists, I don't care. It's called competition. Okay, sue me if you think you got a case, but you know that'll bring more VNR, video news releases on the mainstream media. So you know, all any attention is good attention. Not worried, you know. Anybody can get a lawyer to help you out of these sticky wickets because all you got to prove is your idea is 10% different from somebody else's that's practically a color difference all that patent stuff not <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll put patent pending when i damn well feel like it i'll put that on all the products but i'm not gonna bother compete go ahead i'm the original if it is an original idea then hey you got a right to say that let them prove you wrong but uh, anyhow i'm on your side that's what christ taught me i believe that Remember, think of the dead as living the way God thinks about them as much as you can. That God decides ultimately who lives and dies. That the body accounts for very little, for nothing, the way Christ put it. We think of ourselves as our bodies. We're not our bodies. We're no more our bodies than we are our, car, our cars. No. We know we got to relinquish it. We all know that. But it's not to be too dry about it because I take death very seriously. I don't like it. And there's a way out in Scripture, and I want you to look at it and find it and believe it yourself. Believe it, man. But if I didn't believe in God, I'd think he was a big, fat a-hole. But there's a way out of death. God wants us to be comforted. God is our divine, ultimate parents, our owner. And he wants us to be happy. Why do I know that? Because it's logical. It makes sense. And there's no way you can imagine a better God than the true God. And to pray to that God and, uh, you know, ask anything that you could think of and spend some time so you can even examine your own heart and mind and figure out what you want to ask for. You know, just act, welcome, you know, come and live in me and, you know, change that your will be done in my life. And, you know, just be with me. I know you already know everything. You know more than I know about myself. And certainly more than anybody else could ever know, individually or collectively. And you're the one that can save my life and give me an eternity in a paradise compared to this crap hole that's run by evil men. Absolutely. That's what I look forward to. That's what keeps me going. That's what encourages and strengthens and comforts me. And I hope it does the same for you. Well, friends, I don't have any time to get on to recent current events or other talking points. I got some big news this last week that um, my younger two daughters are in their 30s now. Um, her and her husband are um, pregnant, and uh, I'm gonna maybe, maybe you don't want to count your chickens before they're hatched. There's a million and one things that can happen between now and then, but they're expecting a, a boy in uh, sometime in early March, so that's big uh, big news for me. But uh, other than that, friends, listen. I wish the best to everybody. Have a great day. Have a great eternity, and just remember that these. These evil men got to go down, okay? Universal peace and prosperity, freedom for everybody. That's the only way to fly. I know that's the right spirit to embrace. That's the heart and mind of God. That's what he wants for us. He wants us to be free because it only makes sense. There's no way you can improve on God, and we've got to see that is our destiny, is to get off the money, get off this entire unreality that we've been 
forced to endure for so long. Freedom for everybody. And we're a long way from there right now, right? It's a huge departure, but nevertheless, it's coming. And we need to prepare for it. And the more prepared we are, the less traumatic it'll be. So anyhow, just try to be nicer and nicer and nicer, humbler and humbler and humbler, and more and more friendly and kind, and reach the evil men with love. Unfortunately, they're going to hate it, 